The last couple of months, we have been working so hard to grow all of our own food and to also preserve the harvest so that we have food into the winter and sometimes even beyond that. We're making cucumber kimchi today. It's one of my favorite types of kimchi from Korea from my time spent there. I've got about 40 pounds in this pot that I've already chopped up and we're gonna weigh it again just to make sure that our proportions are right for the recipe and then, then we'll add the carrots, onions, spices, and all the other goodness and then put it in the ferment pot. Forty-one pounds of cucumbers. Very little goes to waste here. I filled a bucket of carrot tops and cucumber ends from chopping up all that kimchi. And so I'm taking that down to the pigs. They love these scraps. There we go. This is the first time in two years that we've had a really, really good cucumber harvest. And it's all thanks to Cruz and Dax. They grew the cucumbers for the family this year and they did an amazing job because our harvest has been prolific to say the least. So we have been preserving by doing the cucumber kimchi and we have also made a lot of pickles, probably a two year supply. Something that I've learned throughout the years of growing all of our own vegetables is that crops don't always work out and it's really nice to be able to preserve more than you need for a year. After we mixed up that big batch of kimchi, I put it in the crocks and then I let it sit at room temperature for about five days to ferment. And then I take it out of the crock and I put it in jars to store it. And I store all of my ferments in my cold room now because that room is kept at about 45 degrees which will stop the cucumber kimchi from continuing to ferment. Prior to having a cold room we did not have an area in our home that got cold enough to store ferments without electricity so we would just store them in an extra refrigerator in our garage.
We are doing some late night preserving. I am making some pizza sauce. I already canned some pizza sauce, but this time I wanted to freeze dry pizza sauce. And I'm really excited about doing this because for two reasons. One is that I don't have to follow a recipe, which is really nice. I can, I can make it the way I would like it to taste rather than following an exact canning recipe and then adding a whole bunch of acid, which you need if you're water bath canning. So I'm really excited to do it this way. And it also is gonna save me a lot of time in the processing. So freeze drying takes longer, but it's way more hands off. So with canning, I would have to be there and do a lot of prep work and all of that. And this is it's, it's just easier in that regard, so. The pizza sauce is now frozen and I'm gonna go put it in the freeze dryer. You can do your food all in one in the freeze dryer. It'll freeze it for you and freeze dry it. But we choose to put it in the freezer because it saves time. It makes the freeze drying process a little bit faster. And we're doing so much freeze drying of our food. Like when we take one batch out, we put another batch in. So it's, it's nice to be able to save time on that end too. So we're gonna take it from the freezer and go and put this stuff in the freeze dryer. We're going on eight weeks of no rain and temperatures above 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So it looks like a desert out here and we don't live in the desert, <laughs> but there's a chance of rain in the forecast. And if you can see, there's a rain cloud there, <laughs> which I'm hoping hits us and we get something. But if not, we're supposed to get more rain in a couple of days and it's supposed to be a significant amount of rain. This is so awesome. I'm gonna go dance in the rain if it rains hard because it deserves a rain dance for sure. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn off my sprinklers here and hope and pray for some rain. so thankful for the rain because it's giving me an opportunity to plant fall crops. I would be able to plant them either way, but it's just a better time to get them in the ground and get them to germinate a little bit easier because we have really saturated ground and it's a little bit cooler right now, which is perfect for planting those fall crops. So usually from about the end of July to maybe the beginning of September is when I'm planting my fall crops. Our average first frost is around the end of October. So that gives me around three months for those crops to mature. And it's usually the quicker ones like greens and I'm planting some carrots. All of those things should be able to mature within that time frame. Some crops I will even plant past that date like spinach. I'll probably have to wait until like middle of September to get in the ground and then I do wait a little bit longer for the turnips as well probably the first of September so I'm really excited I'm gonna get these rows prepped behind me 
I got, to cover my carrots, I have some burlap that I ordered. It's a really big roll. I don't know, like 350 feet or something like that. And it's really hard to carry out here. That's why I'm out of breath. And then I'm going to lay it down on my carrots. It will not go on the kale. I'm going to lay row cover on top of the kale. In the past, when I have purchased burlap, I did so from a specific garden website. This time they were out of stock, so I looked around for some and something I learned and I thought would be good to pass on. The info is that not all burlap is meant for garden use. They sometimes add things that are not good for your garden. So I made sure this one is okay for agricultural use. We purchased some peaches from a local farm stand this year since our own peach trees are not producing fruit yet. And one of the first things that we wanted to do was can the peaches. So to do that, we remove the skins from the peaches and the way that we do that is we take boiling water, put the peaches in there for about one minute and then plunge them into a cold water bath, ice water and then the skins slip right off. And then we cut the peaches in half, remove the pits from the peaches, and then I put them all in a big pot that has a sugar syrup in it. And I hot pack my peaches, which means I do not put them in the jars raw and then pour hot syrup over them. I cook the peaches a little bit first and then put them in the jars. And the reason for doing that is, is because with peaches, they have a ton of air in them. If you've ever canned peaches before and you've done it raw pack, all the peaches will float to the top and a lot of the liquid will siphon out because of all that air in the peaches. So I have learned to hot pack them and it works so much better. And somebody asked me how I get them to not float one is the hot packing and two is that I continually add more and more peaches as they settle. So you'll put them all in the jars and then they'll sort of settle down a little bit and then you can add more and more until the jars are really full. So these jars are packed super tight with peaches. I don't squish them at all, but they all just sort of settle in together because they've been semi-cooked. After the peaches are all packed, then I add in the hot syrup, leave the proper amount of headspace, put on the lids and the rings, and then I process them in a water bath canner. And then after they are done processing and boiling for the right amount of time, I turn the heat off and I let them sit for at least 10 minutes. This helps reduce the likelihood of the liquid siphoning out of the jars when you take them out of the water. And then I just let them cool. Got all the pizza sauces out of the trays. It was easier than I thought. I just had to tip them over and flip it. And uh, now I'm just crushing it. I thought of putting it in the blender, but I didn't want to pulverize it because that would make it too fine. So I'm just crushing it so it fits in the Mylar bags a little better. Okay. Okay. I just really want another bite. Oh yeah, that is. Like, yeah, I could like sprinkle that it's on. It's good. Yeah. It's really good. Is, is this yeah. what they put on like chips and stuff? Like probably, yeah. Freeze dried tomato powder, garlic yeah. powder. Yeah. We should do some of that. I mean, not on chips, but on other stuff. Yeah. Just put them in here, and it should be the equivalent of however many jars I did, right? Yeah. I don't know. Well, it's all. It'd be like. You know, like if you would like it to be tomato sauce, add X amount of water. If you want it to be yeah. like you as, as thick of... as a, 
what's that called? Tomato paste. Yeah. Then only add this much water. Yeah. I think so. Like you yeah. You're just gonna put it on like your eggs in the morning. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> that, but I mean, it's like. So it's not. If it was oh, only. It is this. Okay. So yeah, that one. Okay. Go like this, and then I just go like boom. Good. <laughs> Good. Yeah, sealed it. <laughs> <laughs>